Welcome, welcome, welcome to another world of reality workshop where reality right now is kicking me in the backside. I'm trying to <clears throat> build me a winch bumper here, which is, I built that winch bumper on that Chevrolet. That's my bumper design. Got toolboxes on it, you know. Raise the lid up. See, I got my chains in there. I built that bumper. Got both sides. Even got the latches on it and everything. Which is, for Chevrolet, was pretty straightforward. Just come off your frame horns. Which is right here. That's your frame horn. This bumper can be removed. It's not welded to the frame. That's dumb. Now, dealing with the Jeep and these old J10s, they have, well, let's just say they put a lot of thought when they design their, their vehicles. I don't know about the new ones, but these older ones, they've got a piece right here that extends from the frame over here all the way here ties the frame together reason for that is because we're on a leaf spring setup we have a shackle and that keeps the frame from flexing my ideal was to use part of this old bumper here the original bumper which is made out of really good steel and it's a three-piece bumper so I was just gonna as you can look I welded it and I was gonna tie it all together and straighten out some of the little kinks and add a box to it but when I got into it these pieces wasn't here I fabbed these brackets welded them onto the cross member I want to be able to take my bumper off. I don't want to leave it on there, so I want to be able to remove the bumper. So I fabricated these brackets because I was getting too much flex. Because the only thing that was holding my winch, the main part of the winch, was this bracket and this bracket. And when you put a 10,000 pound winch, of course this Jeep doesn't need 10,000. But I'm going to put a 10,000 on it so I don't burn my motors up. Uh, electric, I'm going to run electric winch on this. My brackets weren't sufficient. So I went in, re welded, I'm mixing and build me a piece to go in here to tie this horn, tie this, you know, get that wiggle out of it, make this a little more solid. I've already drilled my holes in that piece of metal so I can bolt it here and that'll stop my flex so it gives it more support plus I'm pulling off the the frame in the center now a lot of people say well you might take a chance on bending that which will knock my front end out because it would bend my shackles that is very true you have to be aware of that but <clears throat> when Jeep decided to build this I don't know if you can see it. Get down in here a little better. The ground's always been raining for a month. But uh, there is a horseshoe back out. See, they put a piece, put a piece right in here, and they boxed the frame all the way back. I mean, all the way back to the transmission. See, it's all boxed in frame, see that? You guys know what I'm talking about. And then once it gets past that transmission mount, it opens back up to a open frame. So back when Jeep was Jeep, you see they boxed that frame, there's the frame right there, boxed it all the way in. So I not, and this is this piece right here is uh, lapped, 
and welded so it's a two-piece you can see the seam right there so I'm not worried one bit about pulling that in too or bending it so that's why I went ahead and put those brackets on there but this was back when Jeep built stuff um, I don't know what the new ones are uh, what have you I ain't even looked underneath the new frame I've been in the new Jeep but the bolt I cannot get to that bolt I've tried so I'm not going to cut that bolt off um, because it's boxed in I say they put that on there before they box the frame I don't know for sure but I'm going to weld those brackets in two places I'm coming down the side and on the bottom and on the back and if I ever mess this up I can come in here and cut it out with my die grinder and re-weld another one because I can't get my hands back there to get to those old rusted bolts all the other bolts I have replaced so I did put new shocks on it last night you seen them yellow shocks it raised my truck up them shocks have been on there for there ain't no telling how long um, I had to redo the the intake and the exhaust I had to put new gaskets on it <clears throat> the exhaust I had to take to the machine shop and get them work on it it runs it runs so much better I guess I was having a little intake leak I know I had the exhaust leak I could hear that but I was sucking a little air um, once I changed all that put new gaskets on it got it all tightened back up it's a, it's a totally different animal to drive and, and it's really fun to drive now it's got more power I thought the engine was wore out I've not done a compression test I may do that in another video just to show you how a compression test works um, so I can kind of see where I'm at I'll mark all the cylinders and over time I'm sure they're pretty low at some point I will go into this engine and rebuild it the other thing I've been thinking about changing out to electronic ignition put my old stuff back up there's nothing wrong with me running these points. It burns the gas fine. Uh, but electronic ignition will help me get a little bit more power. It gives me a little more hotter spark. But uh, I have been toying with that ideal. I'm not, I hadn't decided yet, but working that way. But anyhow, today I'm going to go in here and build my pieces to set in here, weld it all back up, and uh, bolt my plate back in there. Uh, it's a little bit out it's about a half inch I think on one end shorter than the other I'm probably try to straighten that out too a little bit um, that's reality I got in a hurry was fixing the rain I was trying to tack that up there and I forgot to go back and redo it but anyhow that's working in the mud the water the rain the sun the snow <laughs> And uh, that's what reality is all about. So we're taking a bunch of rust here and, and getting ready to build us something that looks like that similar. I don't know for sure because I don't know what my designs are yet. Because I'm building this as I go. I don't have anything written down on paper, draw it out or nothing. So it's just going to be whatever I see as I start stacking metal. The other thing is you want to kind of keep them as light as possible. That's the heaviest plate I've got. You want that for that winch. There's a lot of stress on that thing. You don't want something that's going to give and fold up. The rest of my materials will be used out of that for the bottom of my boxes. <clears throat> and then I've got some lighter stuff thinner for my tops. So I'll, uh, I'll shed some weight. I really don't want to put a whole lot uh, more weight on the front. I do have a six cylinder. I don't have a V8 so I can I can add another 75 pounds or so, maybe 200. But when I go for my leaf springs, I'll get heavy duty leaf springs, so that'll pick it up and then I should be in good shape. 